Hi, my name is Jenny Weingarten, and I'm a product consultant here at West Music. And I'm Alex. I work in the customer service department as well as in the bid department. And today we're going to talk a little bit about finger symbols. We get some calls and questions about these sometimes, and it's a little bit difficult to explain the differences in the sounds as you move through the model. So we thought we'd make a video and demonstrate each set so you can kind of compare and contrast and figure out what will work the best for you. So the finger symbols originated in the Middle East and were used in ceremonies and dances. Uh, that's the more common variety that look like this, almost like smaller versions of crash symbols. The other variety that we're going to show you today are the Tingsha symbols, and these come from Tibet and come from more of a Buddhist tradition in prayers and ceremonies and are almost more like small bells than symbols. So we're going to talk about both of those. And Jenny is going to demonstrate the different techniques you can use when playing finger symbols. The easiest way to teach a child to play the symbols is to hold them like this and tap up and down. Some other people like to play with the, holding them close to the edge and tapping this way. Sometimes it's hard to get a great sound because with your fingers touching the symbols, it can, it can mute them, but that's another way to play this, the finger symbols. So we're going to start today with the basic beat symbols, and we have two varieties. Uh, right here we have the stamped finger symbols. These are a little bit thinner. The volume is a little bit less. Um, Jenny will demonstrate here. And then you can contrast those with the cast finger symbols from basic beat. These have a little bit higher pitch, they have a little bit louder volume, and they're going to have a little bit more sustain because of the thicker metal. The nice thing about the basic beat symbols is that the elastic comes already attached for you on the symbols, so there's no tying involved. They also come in pairs of two. You get two sets when you purchase the basic beat finger symbols. The next ones that we're going to talk about come from Zildjian, and these symbols are fairly thick. They're a little bit closer, uh, I would say, to the cast basic beat symbols. They're definitely thicker than the stamped ones, so again, you're going to have the high pitch, you're going to have a little bit longer sustain, and these also have a little bit more of a traditional look to them. And those are going to be very comparable either to those basic beats or to the Sabians that we're going to talk about next. The Zildjian finger symbols come with the elastic unattached, so you'll just need to tie a little knot in the end and slide it through the hole in the top. These are sold as a single pair, and they come with this pretty red pouch. So now we're going to look at the Sabian finger symbols, and with Sabian, we have two different varieties. They have a heavy set and a light set. I have the heavy set here. Jenny has the light set. So she'll demonstrate those. And now the heavier set. Again, notice that the thicker the finger symbol is, the higher the pitch is going to be. The thicker symbol is going to have a little bit longer sustain. It's going to have a little more volume, but it's going to have a higher pitch than the lightweight. So heavy and light. Let me try again. Once again, the Sabians come with the elastic unattached, so you'll have to tie it on. The nice thing about that is that you can adjust the length of the elastic to however long or short you want it, and then you can just cut the, cut the excess off. They also come in single pairs and come with a nice little bag. So the last thing we're going to demonstrate here, these are the Ting Cha symbols. And again, rather than coming from the Middle East, these actually originate in Asia. These are very thick. They're almost like little bells. And these would be used in prayer ceremonies and for meditation by Buddhist monks. And you can play these. These are a little bit easier to play with this technique due to the fact that they're cast so thick that this portion of the finger symbol is almost separated from the part that you're going to strike. The bell of the cymbal is sort of isolated on these, so they're very easy to play with this side technique. These can also be played using the other technique that we showed. 
These have a lot of sustain because this is extremely thick metal. And so out of all of these, you're going to get the most sound and the most sustain out of this model. But if you're looking for a real light, delicate sound, these are a bit overwhelming when compared to the lighter <laughs> basic beat stamp symbol. So again, and then the delicate. So those are the finger symbols that we sell. Uh, those are the techniques you'll want to use when playing. And if you have any other questions, you can always call us and talk to either myself or Jenny, and we'd be happy to explain more about these instruments.